Hey, what's up, everyone? This is episode 24 of the Grinding It Up Challenge. And this is going to be an awesome episode because it's going to be a full-length session recorded. Uh, I've already fired up the three Zoom tables that we're going to play. Uh, I'm going to get into some questions first, and then I'm going to also show you a hand that I screwed up pretty badly on the river, but we'll get to that pretty soon. First of all, I've got a couple of uh, news items that I wanted to let you know. There's some good news and some bad news. So first good news item is, of course, the new intro. You might have seen it already, and uh, I don't know what you think, but I feel it's like really awesome. It, uh, it pretty much pictures me and my wife. Uh, I'm getting crushed by the wife. She, you know, she reads my soul. Um, she reads right through all my plays that I make, and she crushes me hats up every time we play. But uh, you also have to say that she runs pretty hot in, in playing poker heads up in that small sample that we have. So, uh, well, you know, uh, there's also the cats in there. Uh, let's see if uh, the cats are going to be making a guest appearance in today's extra long video. Uh, that was what I was going to say. I mean, this video is going to be extra long. So, um, and I'm going to couple this good news item with the bad news item. It's going to be the last episode of the series for approximately four weeks. So uh, this series is officially going on hiatus from now on. Um, I'm going to have to do a lot of stuff next week preparing for my three-week vacation in the US. Uh, going to have to do a lot of grinding still at 200 NL. So my main volume next week, even in the morning in the morning hours, is going to be at 200 NL. And I'm also going to have to prepare some stuff for the poker schools, like Intelli Poker and Poker School Online. You know, all the kind of work that I'm probably going to miss out on when I'm in the US, and I won't be able to play. So I definitely have to make up for some VPPs right before I leave. Uh, yeah. So um, where was I? Next week. Um, on Saturday next week, I'm going to be leaving for the U.S. We're uh, flying out to Vegas and then starting our road trip there. Uh, we're going to be going to the Grand Canyon first. Um, of course, I'm going to be able to play some live sessions, uh, especially at the Win. I'm really looking forward to that. We're staying at the Win, um, and it's only been a couple. Going to, going to be a couple of days in Vegas, and then we're going to start the road trip. Grand Canyon first, then we're flying out to San Francisco and starting uh, to drive down the coast to LA, uh, San Diego, national parks, um, you know, that kind of stuff, and then going back to Vegas in the end. Uh, chilling out at the beaches as we move along, I guess. Uh, it's going to be a, an awesome vacation, I hope. I'm really looking forward to that, and I'm, you know, uh, really looking forward to take some time off here. Uh, yeah, so next week I'm not going to be able to put up videos, um, and uh, in the three weeks that I'm that I'm gone, uh, that I'm in the U.S., you're not going to see any videos from me either. If you do want to follow uh, the road trip, uh, I'm going to put updates, blog updates out there, and they're going to be, um, I guess, some of them might end up uh, on the PokerStars blog actually. Uh, but most of them will be at IntelliPoker and Poker School Online. I'll be writing uh, regular blog segments there. Sorry, guys, that was the phone. So, uh, where was I? Um, yeah, the road trip. Uh, that's going to be four weeks, three, one week preparation, and three weeks vacation. So, I'm going to be back uh, when WCOOP starts. I'm going to be playing some events uh, when I come back. I also will be hosting some events, some final tables when I'm coming back, so at the end of September that's going to be. So since it's going to be WCOOP time uh, at the end of September, I think you might expect the series to be continuing at the beginning of October. And um, yeah, so I hope you're not too sad about this. Uh, it's been a lot of fun. Uh, I really enjoy making these videos. Uh, I hope you enjoy watching them. Uh, if you have any feedback, of any kind, if you want me to do uh, other stuff, go into uh, other questions, hands, whatever you have, keep sending them in, and I'll have a look at them uh, when I come back. But it's it's going to be uh, some time, so uh, I hope you guys understand. And um, yeah, that's why I'm giving you this extra long video today. So, uh, first of all, Let's get into some questions because I found a forum post at the 2 plus 2 forums that somebody wrote um, and he was asking something where he expected maybe an odd answer, but I don't think that's an odd question at all. I actually think that's one of the best questions that I ever got because that was something that I was going to talk about anyway 
um, and I, I've, I've written about this in, in some of my blogs. Um, I think I did. I mention that I'm going to be blogging. Yeah, you might you might actually know that. I mean, IntelliPoker, Poker School Online. If you look for blogs there, you're going to find my blog. Uh, I got a forum blog, and I also got a front page blog. So um, I'm going to be putting up updates there. Um, so the question is. I'm sure a team online pro such as yourself wouldn't need to question their abilities too often. That's not right. <laughs> um, I can tell you that for sure. How do you keep yourself focused during the swings that you have, questioning yourself and your ability? I'm still trying to overcome them and I'm just finding myself questioning myself more and more each day. And that's absolutely natural. I mean, there's something that I wanted to show you. Uh, in June, between in the middle of June until the start of... Uh, no, it's actually until the end of July. Here we go. Look at this. I prepared this graph. It's my 200 NL graph during that time. I went on a massive downswing. I just couldn't win a single pot within 15k hands or so. Um, and that's when you start questioning yourself and your plays and your strategy. And it's really tough. And it, it, it doesn't get any easier with time and experience. I can tell you that. I mean, I've been playing poker for like five to six years probably even six years now, and it hasn't gotten any easier. It's still the same thing every single time. Whenever you go on a downswing, whenever you are in a huge break-even stretch, uh, and that does happen, um, you can't help but keep questioning yourself and your place. And, and it's quite natural, quite a natural trait. I mean, humans do tend to get results-oriented, and they think about the stuff that happens, and, you know, What's, what sticks out in your memory is the pots that you lose and the pots you lose to certain hands and you definitely don't uh, keep them in memory as losing to a certain hand range. Well, if you can do that every single time, then congratulations, that's awesome. But uh, the quite natural trait here is actually to not think of it that way. And, you know, it's still tough. Um, and... You know, I've, I've grinded my way back up out of this, and I've had much worse swings than this. I mean, it's it's been 4K, and it's a lot of money. Uh, I've lost 7K once, and I grinded it back up. So, you know, actually, when I'm looking back now, every time I had these swings, when I, when I look at the bigger picture, I just see that this is just a, a stretch of time, a short period of time that I need to overcome. And I just need to stay strong during that time. That's all I need to do. Um... I need to stay motivated. I need to do stuff that motivates me. Uh, I'm going to watch videos. I'm going to analyze hands. I'm going to review sessions. I'm going to do all the stuff that's necessary uh, to, to, uh, to stay focused again and to keep me motivated again. Because if I don't, then everything will just slip. And uh, in the end, it's just going to be bad play that adds up uh, insult to injury. So, yeah, you should really be... be uh, um, Looking at the long run, I, I know that's tough and it's, it's something that sounds so dull, but it's it's all that, that I can say because every time I look back at a downswing that I had, you know, if I look back, if I look, if I look at it here, it's cruel and it's soul crushing, but if I look at it from here, I'm feeling like really proud, you know, bam, 4k. And after that, I actually went ahead and made another 3k, so in the end, I, I had a 7k upswing, uh, which just go, just goes straight that way without huge swings, so, you know, it happens, and uh, things that that will come around uh, in your poker career. If you're taking it up, taking a taking up a professional poker career, it's gonna be you're gonna see swings and you're gonna see time stretches that you've never seen before. And and some stuff might be worse than your worst nightmare or that you could have ever imagined. And um, just don't think of it as something that uh, just pulls you down, but just think of it as you'll be able to get out of it in the end because if you just stay motivated and just uh, keep working on your game that's all you pretty much have to do um, I know it sounds dull, I know it sounds pretty easy but you know it isn't, it isn't, I can tell you and you know questioning yourself and questioning your abilities that's something that I have been struggling with uh, all the time during every single month of those six years I've had like a couple of losing months each year I've had a couple of break-even months each year but every time in the end the winning months were bigger and overcame all the losing and break-even stretches so I just have to look at that bigger time frame and then I'm all good you know and that's what counts in the end um, well but you know there's no real cure against questioning yourself it's just a human and natural trait I'd, I'd say and um, 
all you can do is uh, try and keep working on your game so that you at least um, that you at least can say that you've done everything that's necessary and that you don't uh, like sit there and say oh my god I can't win anymore it's not gonna it's not gonna turn around I'm I'm so I'm cursed uh, my fate is sealed you know that way it's just not gonna work and it has never worked out for me that way and um, you know good story on the side actually my wife came to me yesterday and uh, you know I was down swinging at 200 ml I lost like 2k in the in the last couple of days I, I didn't have a winning session in like five days and you know it's really frustrating um, I can tell you and uh, you know my wife was just just looking at my graph and, and she told me the same thing she said yeah you got out of that every single time so why worry just keep doing what you do keep working on your game you get out of it and she said that with with such a such a natural um such a such a natural um looking for the word here um she was so convinced you know that it's it was just it was it just struck me and you know in the end she's right she's absolutely right so uh in order to combat and fight against that questioning yourself or uh questioning your ability just keep working on your game that's all you need to do Right, so enough talk. That was like a huge philosophy talk. I hope you enjoyed it, even though I didn't even find the right words at times. So <laughs> uh, that was a that was a hand from this morning. I didn't like how I played this hand. So I opened eight nine suited, got a call from a player right behind me, and I flop an open and it's straight draw. Uh, bet the flop, turn is an ace, perfect card for me to sack barrel against all the small pairs and you know inferior hands. And he calls the turn, so. River is the six of clubs. Uh, four five gets there. Eight nine. I have a straight, of course, and the backdoor flush gets there. Um, and I bet again, and he insta jammed. Yeah, you know, it's again that kind of jamming on the river at micro stakes is probably always the nuts. And I'm really right now. I'm doubting if anybody will be showing up with a set here with two pair or with a inferior straight. You know, I did end up making the call and. He had the backdoor flush, so it's just one of those combinations uh, that I could think of. Eight nine of clubs, of course. Jack nine of clubs. Uh, king queen of clubs. King jack of clubs. Maybe queen jack of clubs. You know, um, it's it's close. Still not really decided if it's a fold on the river or not, but I guess it might be. Should have bet a little bit smaller. But judging by the insta jam that I got, I think a fold is definitely something um, that should be. That should be uh, considered there. Uh, right, so to just looking at my little notepad here, I made some notes what I wanted to address today. Um, yeah, I'm just opening Holder Manager 2 and then uh, we'll get going. Let's have a look. Just got set out from those tables. Gonna get them back up. That's the. Uh, the west coast actually uh, the area around Big Sur if you've been there I'm gonna be there pretty soon I'm really happy looking forward to it so yeah we're gonna fire up the tables and here we go ace 10 suited I'm gonna call against the min rays seems like a regular uh, that's so small don't know what to make of this Right, let's wait for the holder manager. Half pot, half pot, half pot. Probably something like, don't know, backdoor draw. Um, gonna fold the a7 and 9 10 suited. You can see whole cards, right? <laughs> yeah, I just wanted to make sure. Um, that's just a joke. 9 10 suited, I'm gonna flat and wait until stats pop up. So here we go. He pots it flop a 10, so, I mean, going nowhere on the flop at least. Turn is not that great, but I'm a little bit protected. I don't think I get bluffed here on the turn too often, since, you know, that ace is, uh, should be quite a scary card to the opponent. Uh, I'm gonna fold here. I think I have better 10s to keep calling. Right, so, let's get started. Um, uh, bankroll is at $480. And we're looking to get it back up to uh, more than 600, so we can actually take the first 25 NL shots when I'm getting back from vacation. 
Um, I really hope that I'll be able to do that. That's an awesome flop. I like that flop. Flopping Broadway is always nice. You know, look at this graph. I just showed you the 200 NL graph, and it's it's pretty much the same with the 10 NL. You know, there's just a stretch where you I can't really win a pot right now. <laughs> it just just looks like every time I'm in a pot, I'm just destined to lose it. Um, and you know, just uh, sit it out, grind through it, and then one. At one point, I'm pretty sure uh, I'm gonna catch an insane heater, and it will go like this, and then we'll we'll be right behind the right beyond the $600 bankroll, which we're looking to get for 25 now. So, no worries. We're gonna be pretty relaxed about this. 8 9, I'm gonna steal. That's folding, folding. Should be marking people actually, like regulars specifically. So, yeah, I get 3 bad. Pretty small. Would definitely defend the suited 8 9. He's folding 80% to steal, so if everybody folds, I might open, but I've got him tagged as a as an aggressive regular, so I'm not really sure if I do want to steal here. It could be an auto profit spot. We'll have a look at that. So we got two recreational players, and we're going to limp behind here. So Flopping two pairs is always nice. Ace eight, I could potentially open, but I've got a, a recreational button player behind. I don't want to play this hand from out of position. Ace nine is like the minimum, I think. So this session is going to be long. And, um, well, who knows? Maybe we'll catch the heater today. And... Um, Take, be, we'll be able to take the first 25 and now shot again. Uh, here with Ace Two suited, you know he's opening three x. Not sure. There's already dead money in the pot. Um, I think I'm folding. That's a good turn. And with Ace Deuce here, I think from the big blind, I shouldn't be defending it against a short stack. Against a, a full stack, I'd definitely call here. I think. But against the under the gun open of a mid stacker, I don't think that's too profitable. Don't really like to pass up on suited aces um, too much. Um, definitely betting this river. Just hoping to get really looked up by any pair. I mean, you know, the flush gets there, but since nobody had interest on the flop, people tend to put you on a bluff there. So. Uh, 8-4 suited, you know, can't be too bad, it's suited. <laughs> the phrase it's suited, actually, <laughs> there, there's so much truth to it. I mean, people do tend to to ridicule that and say like, oh, you just played that because it was suited, but, you know, actually, people have a point there. Uh, suited makes up for some great playability, and playability is key, you know. Pocket 8s, I'm going to flat. And at seven, it's probably a little bit too weak to call here, but I can't really fold a pair on the flop yet. Uh, he calls, so yeah, I'm definitely betting big on this river. Uh, there's so many bad turn cards, I guess, that calling doesn't seem that attractive. Maybe I should raise this sometime. Well, he also bets pretty big on the flop. I mean, I do have a five outer there and I have position, so can't be too bad. Queen 10 off with a recreational player involved with me on the button. I think I can actually flat call. And I'm definitely betting here. Oh, I'm flopping pretty nicely. I'm going to check this back. Um, I don't mind a free card, but you know, Queen 10 on that board. I don't get calls by worse, and I do want to induce some bluffs. I'm going to check call here on the turn, and probably check fold on the river. Um, I feel like I have to bet really small on that river. Sevens uh, on the button for 7x. I don't close the action, so I don't think I can make a profitable call here. I got some thin value here on the river from King High. Not too bad. So, yeah, the holder manager will just keep updating here. Min raise, I'd usually flat call, but he's so short. 
I don't think that's profitable. And same applies here, of course. You know, somebody in one of the forum posts that I read, somebody was like really wondering why I was defending so wide in the big blind. And um, the reason for that is I just feel like, especially at micro stakes or at levels where you feel like you have an edge over your opponents, you should definitely be focused on seeing a lot of flops. And if you're given a great price, the hand itself doesn't really matter that much. As long as you're getting a great price, you can also uh, play a fit or fault mentality in most situations and uh, still turn a profit because the times that you actually make a hand, uh, you might be able to make a lot more money and get back uh, all the losses that you had by investing preflop. Uh, Ace-Jack offsuit against a 3-bet. I actually think that in that position people are not 3-betting too wide, so I'm gonna give this guy credit and just fold Ace-Jack. Uh, I just feel like at micro stakes, the 3-betting, 10 and L micro stakes, uh, the 3-betting is just not that uh, that big of a deal. People are just not 3-betting enough for you to to start defending too light. I definitely defend a suited Ace-Jack there, of course. But you know, ace check off suit is just going to be a hand that will get us into trouble. Because in general, people at these stakes are just not nowhere near 3 betting wide enough or often enough for you to either get exploited by the fact that they do, or you actually exploit them more by folding ace jack, you know, um, because you don't give them action for their premium hands. Um, and that way, you exploit those players that are not 3 betting wide enough. Suited Jack on the button. It's going to be an easy open. Going to be clicking quite fast, talking quite fast, so hope you can follow. Suited King, awesome hand. Uh, well, Jack High is not going to be enough to win at Showdown, so we're just going to bet. And we have some backdoor draws. I like backdoor straight and backdoor flush draws to keep firing. Somebody also asked a question about my HUD. And, uh, you know, I, I think I've gotten into this before. I'm just not that much of a HUD guy. My HUD is pretty basic. And, um, you know, especially at stakes where you won't be able to get a good sample on people. And by good sample, I mean like 10K or even 20K hands on somebody. It's just, it doesn't make too much sense to put too much weight into stats. I'm definitely going to flat tense and uh, expect him to be pretty... Um, pretty strong here. Once he checks back on that flop, I think we should bet. Deuces. This is pretty close from the small blind. The price is pretty good. I do think I can I can turn a profit here, especially when there is a potential short stacker, uh, weaker player. I'm gonna check raise this river actually, because he's more likely to be on a ace high type hand or a draw or uh, some overcard hand that he might actually decide to bluff on the river then he would ha I don't think he can actually call a river bet that's what I was gonna say and um, that's an ugly turn card to be honest I just feel like I'm checking this back because you know I could potentially get check raised here and again, pretty big 3-bet by somebody who doesn't 3-bet all that light. Um, I'm going to fold King-Queen to that 3-bet. Same thing with the Ace-Jack. I think the biggest exploits you can make is just folding when they have the nuts or when they have a strong hand and not mess around with people too much. Well, yeah, I was just hoping that he would bluff this river. And in case he does actually have a queen, he's going to value bet it and then I'm um, going to be able to, to check raise. Whoops. The graphics are a little bit out of proportion today. Um, I flop a 4, but it's probably not going to be good enough at showdown. Uh, he's short, so I don't expect him to be folding now. I'm going to check it back and hope to at least sometimes be able to show it down, but that just doesn't look like a good texture. He's also not going to fold a queen, and he's not going to fold a flush draw. So... Uh, that's a pretty small 3-bet, to be honest. Uh, but again, you know, his 3-bet is such, is so small. <laughs> you know, I think I'm just going to fold King-Jack off. King-Jack suited, I'd definitely call. So. He seems pretty aggressive. He's 
yeah, he's folded 100% so far. But that's just not a decent sample. As I was saying, you know, I'm not putting too much weight into stats, especially when you're not going to be able to uh, get... Um, this is this guy in a previously 3-bet me. He's probably a wreck. I recognize the name. Um, you know, I could go all ways here. Uh, you know, I'm actually going to try and limp in. Something that's getting overlooked is the option to just uh, limp into the pot. Uh, definitely flatting here and calling that race. Now I'm pretty protected from the fact that he most likely um, gonna bet that river I think he could potentially call with ace high or 10 of course <laughs> I don't know uh, what 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 happened here on the turn I just missed out on the action did I did it go check check uh, what's that whoops yeah it went check check and then you know, I don't expect people to be folding on the river there. So, my sixes are sometimes good at showdown. I don't need to turn them into a bluff. Um, betting my flush draw here. Pretty innocuous flop, so I should get a lot of folds, actually. Uh, seven five. You know, judging by the screen name, I think he's, he's most likely to be a regular. And queen nine, I'm going to be stealing. <coughs> okay, so, um. This is tricky. I have some showdown value. I'm going to check back. Against two people, I don't like to bluff too much on these dry boards. Because, you know, it's pretty likely that one of them has an ace. Especially when one of them is a recreational player. They just... They usually call or play pretty much any ace they can get their hands on. I haven't seen recreational players folding aces too much. They limp call with, like, I think the 3 is not good enough, and I'm just going to check fold. Pocket 3 is against the min race. Definitely calling. And folding now. So let's do a little exercise on the side uh, and count the, the, the number of times that we actually get 3-bet preflop. And I bet you that at the end of this video, the number is not going to be higher than 10. And uh, it's going to be pretty realistic that these 10 times were just uh, pretty strong hands, or at least better hands than ours in most cases, on average. That's something that I would that I would bet for. Um, yeah, I was saying about the stats thing, I just think that people put way too much weight into stats. And the thing is, stats pretty much pull your attention away from what's really important in a hand, focusing on the game plan. Um, of course, you've got to adjust the game plan to the opponent type, but you know, just because you know the opponent type, that's number four and five. So we do get three battles quite a little bit now. <laughs> but you know, that's a hand and a size where we can actually flat call in position, um, because eight nine suited plays pretty well. Uh, against a small 3-bet and getting a decent price. It's an alright hand to defend with. And he's gonna bet, so we're just gonna call, of course. Wow, so it's a uh, sixth time now that we got 3-bet. Um, well, he might be pretty strong. He's a recreational player. I don't want to see anything but a fold, uh, a uh, a jam here. I don't want to get into a multi-way situation. Um, with the 3 and the 9 on the turn, that's not a good card. I'm going to fold. So, lost the coin flip there. Uh, he barrels again pretty big. That sizing doesn't look bluffy to me, to be honest. Um, there isn't also, also, there isn't too many bluffs in his range, I don't think. And uh, that's not a great turn card for him to bluff, so I think I'm giving up here. 
yeah, losing flips stinks a little, but well, what can you do? I think the best play to make there in a in a multi-way pot preflop is to get it in with ace king. And you know, the guy was short. I don't think four betting has that much of a higher EV there, especially since the other guy could actually call. And we could still end up in a multi-way pot. Um yeah, that's not a great flop. We need to win more flips. Uh, Jack-7 suited could be an open, but he's short, so I'd rather not. But on the button. We're also going with Jack-6 suited. Suited Jacks. Nom nom nom. Flop a flush draw. Get two calls. Definitely betting this flop. It's ace high. And we have equity, so that's good. Uh, turn card isn't all that great. Oh, number seven. So <laughs> I have to correct myself. Maybe at the end of the video we're going way above ten. Not sure. So when he calls that flop, um, I think he will almost always have an ace. So I'm going to check this back and take a free card. I'm um, going to flat jacks here. I don't think it's good enough to, uh, to four bet against an unknown player. And definitely check calling here. And that looks hmm, strange. Um, definitely calling the turn as well. You could be semi bluffing with some hands here. And I think I will, I will end up uh, being good here a reasonable amount. Here's double barreling with ace king. Something that I definitely don't expect on this board. But like there's so many draws out there. You can have like spade draws and diamond draws. And you know, it's pretty. But, you know, that also goes to show that uh, 10 and L players are actually not capable of uh, bluffing the river too much. So, you know, that goes to show you that's the perfect card to bluff. I might have folded. I think, I, yeah, I think I should have folded if he were to jam this river. Um, but he didn't do that. Uh, it would have been the perfect opportunity. But, you know, uh, that's when uh, uh, micro stakes players, that's where micro stakes players are usually not really able to, to pull the trigger. And that helps you in a sense that you can actually um, make tight laydowns um, when um, I think I'm, that's just a, a bad turn card. Uh, I don't think he's folding anything here. Um, you know, it just helps you making big laydowns in spots where people are just never bluffing the river or being able to judge your the relative strength of your hand much better. So, um, as I'm seeing it right now, this is actually what I'd call the season finale of grinding it up. So we could call this season one, and then continue with season two. Uh, this could be a three better call, since I don't know the guy, I'm just going to call. Uh, and we'll start off with season two in October. So, yeah, just, to, just like it is with the big series, I think Walking Dead is coming back in October too. Um, you can be looking forward to season two. Oh, why did I fold this? That was a suited hand. Man, that was a suited hand. Don't fold suited hands on the button, man. <laughs> it's not good. Um, yeah, so it's coming back in October. Season two. I should produce a trailer, right? <laughs> That's a pretty good card, actually, in the sense that he shouldn't be bluffing it, and I should be good with King I here. Sometimes, at least. I think this is number nine. Uh, ten seven. I think ten eight suited. I would defend ten seven suited. I'm gonna fold. We're a little deeper, so I could actually get away with calling there. So we're close to number ten. So well, maybe I have to correct myself. Um, there's some three betting going on here. Uh, interesting. I actually feel like it's not. Uh, yeah, so we're playing the board and he's not going to fold, I guess. Uh, uh, he called with King I. Refresh. But I think we're still down in this session, yeah. Pretty much. Don't want to end this season on a downswing. Well, maybe it's a, it's a good cliffhanger, actually, if we end this season on a downswing, to be honest. 
because you know that's what uh, what make up for what usually makes up for good material and you guys got something to sweat out until the start of October that's a, a good flop and I'm gonna check race I mean I do I wanna build a pot here definitely and uh, I'm definitely gonna bet this turn He can also have some better ace highs that he's gonna fold on this turn. Like he could have, uh, you know, ace king, ace queen, ace jack. Um, I don't think he has those types of hands when he calls on the turn. So I think I should be giving up here with ace high. Can I? He can actually have some worse flush draws, to be honest. So if he were to bet in that spot. I might have been inclined to actually call. Wouldn't have minded a call with ace high there. Getting donked into people don't fold much on paired boards, so I'm not going to race. But I'm definitely going to bet this turn because it's like one of the best turn cards for my hand, and he should be check folding some of his weaker pairs. And I do have some equity, so. Yeah, I think it's good. We're ending it on a downswing, shall we? Um, so it's it's going to be a nice cliffhanger, and uh, you guys are going to have to check back in October if we're going to make it out of this. King, queen, I'm going to flat. You know, you might see that I'm not really 3-betting all that much preflop, and that has to do with the fact that I don't think um, I'm getting a lot of action 3-betting people. Um, now, we've got 100 hands on this guy could have a look at his uh, whoops I don't see anything can't go into pop-ups here I think standard would be a fold um, even though I'm on the button um, but you can definitely three bet and flat call there it's all fine but you know against unknown regs I don't expect to make much money with king queen against an under the gun open not at 10 and L maybe at a stake where uh, I get to know the people better and where I feel like I can make better assumptions, better decisions about their behavior post-flop. And that's number 10. So, yeah, now we officially got 3-bet a lot. Um, I'm going to 4-bet this. You know, that's just a min 3-bet. Uh, it could potentially be aces, but I also think that at the same time people are never folding um, when they... Uh, when they uh, three bet that small, so I'm definitely four betting for value here. It's not a good flop, but I don't see myself folding for a small bet like this. He could potentially be bluffing, betting weaker hands. And if he's milking me, then he's milking me. I'm just calling him down for the 30 cents, whatever he has, and um, just be fine with it. And if he has an ace, he has an ace. Not much you can do about it. But it just goes to show you that. Um, Somebody who actually invested money preflop, really tight guy, uh, who invested money preflop is not going to be willing to let it go too much when you when you four bet them. That might actually be a reason, more of a reason to three bet. But I've just come to found that people are folding so much to three bets. Uh, that might actually pay off more to bluff three bet them. But then you know, the real question is, who are you going to bluff three bet? Um, that's like yeah you know I don't think it's the most profitable thing to do at these stakes it's definitely an option and I, I wouldn't hate it and I do think that there is room for playing such a style even at smaller stakes if you play these on a regular basis maybe you have some different experiences than I have you can definitely uh, relate to that but I just find like I'm gonna actually Thinking about limping here, but you know, I'm just raising sixes. Probably a recreational player. Don't want to bet this flop. This is the 11th time we got three bets. <laughs> so, yeah, okay, correcting myself. There is a, some three betting going on, but you know, I don't know any of these guys. I don't know what they're up to. They could potentially. <laughs> he was checking down two pair, so awesome that we saved money there. Um, yeah, I think the. The biggest edge to be had is post-flop at these stakes, at any stakes really.
doesn't really matter what stakes you play, but I just feel like if I get into three bad situations, it's just bloating the pot um, with the hands that I don't want to bloat it with because I don't really know what people are gonna be up to post flop. Um, some of them try to never fold, never fold in three bad pots or four bad pots. Uh, some of them try to bluff you. Others, um, you know, there's just so much stuff going on to consider that I just don't like. Um, getting into these kinds of situations. I think 9-7 here should be a check fold. That's just a bad board. Uh, queen jack against a small open from the small blind. I think that's going to be a call. Against the cutoff, I think I should be folding. And king-queen against another gun open, of course. Definitely open opening seven eight suited. Okay, number twelve. <laughs> oh boy. Uh, yeah, people do three bet. Okay. At least a little bit more than at five and L. But you know. There's really not um a lot you can do against these unknown people. I still think that the straightforward approach here is the best. Whoops. So we finally flop a decent hand, so we're gonna see bet. <clears throat> I wanna win at least one pot, you know? Uh, so down two buy-ins so far. Um, I think that's a decent board to see bet because I can get called by worse here. Uh, I'm definitely betting smaller here. Actually, I should be betting the same amount. I don't know why I bet. Um, that's a very good turn, and we're definitely betting, of course. Suited hand on the button. Let's bet. So since he's gonna never fold an ace, I actually think that he has uh, that people are peeling uh, with worse hands on ace high a lot. So there's some value to be had with a medium pair to bet on the flop. Small raise with sevens, potentially another recreational player joining the pot. Well, at least I want a pot now, so that's good. And um, flatting sevens here. Um, not folding to a 40 cent bet. It's just half the pot. I have equity and some showdown value. Uh, could see bet this flop, but when he bet, when he uh, calls from the big blind against another gun open, he's pretty pair heavy. So that's a good river card. I somehow always get bailed out on the river. Uh, so when he checks back this turn, it's interesting. I think I need to bet against his medium strength hands. Because he's not going to put me on a king too much. And if he has a hand like pocket eights or nines or maybe even ace high, he might get himself to hero call there. Definitely betting my two pair. I'm trying to take it down. Uh, sevens with a recreational player in the small blind. I do want to drag him along in case I do flop a set. I want him in the pot. And that's that's alright. I mean, 3-betting that small, giving me a great price. Unless he's going to 4-bet, I think. Ah, he's 4-betting, so we have to fold. 9-9 nine, nine player opening under the gun. We're just going to fold that hand. Um, with two overs and queen high, I think a bet is okay on a dry board like this. Right, so it's been 45 minutes, guys, and um, I actually like the idea of ending this season of grinding it up on a downer. Since, as I said, it's gonna be a, it's gonna make up for some good cliffhanger. Oh, I don't like my seabed here. I'm out of position. I thought I was in position. He did fold. Wow. Don't expect that too much, but you know, people seem to be folding to seabeds a lot, so.
just seabed <laughs> with overs at least. Uh, I don't like seabedding with too many overs though. I mean, I, it would be much pref much more preferable if I had a backdoor draw here, but since that's not the case. Um, also, don't try to bluff that river because when they call this kind of flop texture, they're pretty likely to actually have an ace. And I would bet like, and I'm good with queen high <laughs> at least some of the time, <laughs> but you know, uh, uh, three four x boards, two four x boards, two five x boards. People are floating a lot with ace high combinations, uh, ace x, small ace x, um, and you know when the ace comes, it's it's most likely not really a great card to bluff. So yeah, that puts our new bankroll to four hundred and seventy two dollars. So we suffered a downer of nine total stacks, but yeah, I mean that was twenty five and L, so you can't really say too much about this. And you know that's a swing. It's repeating itself. I mean, it's it's about the same that it was here. That was 10 and L2, so you see, it does happen. And it, it, it happens all the time. And then, all of a sudden, you go like, boom, all the way up. Right, okay, guys. It's been a big pleasure making this video series for you. I hope you enjoyed it. And um, I'll be back for season number two, starting October. So uh, stay tuned for that. And in the meantime, keep grinding it up.